Hi, my name is Jamila and I write curriculum for Code.org. In this video, I'm going to demo the manipulatives that are used in the curriculum, um, as well as kind of provide some um, ideas for how you can use these manipulatives to help students create uh, a mental model of the way that data types and objects and variables operate in Java. Manipulatives are a really helpful way to help students kind of create a mental model of the way that variables and, and um, objects and different data types uh, function. Um, so they can kind of visualize and manipulate, physically manipulate with how variables are storing information um, and kind of that transfer of data back and forth between different variables. So in this particular code segment, just to kind of demonstrate different ways that these manipulatives can be used, um, here we have this code segment where we are creating a couple variables. Um, so we have um, a double, for example, um, and you could use envelopes um, instead of cutting out these manipulatives um, that would do the same job. You could just kind of get different sized envelopes so that way you could still model um, the size difference um, with the different variables. Um, but we do this with the, the manipulatives. Um, I have this double variable, so, uh, and then it's going to store the value 2.5. So I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and write 250. And this is going to get stored inside of our variable. So I'm going to put this inside of here and close it up. And I'm giving this variable the name price. So I'm going to use a little sticky note here called price. So price is now a double variable. And inside of it, we have the value 250. Um, on the next line of code, I have um, an int variable. I'm going to take this int, and this is going to store the value 10. I'm going to get another scrap piece of paper, write the value 10, put this inside of our int, close that up. So now I have an int variable, and I want it to be called first. All right. Then on our next line, I see that now I'm setting price equal to whatever the value is of price plus 0.5. So I don't know what the value is. I'm going to have to take it out um, to get this value. And I see it's 2.5. So I need to add 0.5 to it. So that's going to be 3. Now, once it comes out of the variable, it's gone in memory. So I end up throwing that off to the side. And I'm putting the new value 3 and storing that inside the variable. So that is the equals part um, of it to store it back inside the variable. Then on my next line, I see that I'm creating another variable called second, um, which is also an int. And it's going to get the value that's in first. Well, I don't know what's in first. I have to take a peek. I have 10. So I'll close that back up. Get a, another scrap of paper and copy that value down. So that way I can put it inside my other int variable and call this second. So I have double price and first is int second. So this is also helpful like if you're trying to um, help students understand um, swapping values um, in variables, for example, maybe I need to swap the values that's in second and first. Um, but again, reinforcing the fact that once I take the value out, it's gone in memory. So I can't just flip it over. I'd have to create another variable to copy the value and then switch it over. So these are helpful to kind of model different types of um, algorithms and problems that students can solve. Um, 
We can also, setting these off to the side, um, represent classes. Um, so this other manipulative, this little foldable, folds in half with the class name on the outside. And what I have here is um, a class that I'm going to, this is gonna represent a blueprint, and I'm gonna represent this shape class on my blueprint. So I have shape is the name of the class. I have some instance variables that are private. So since they're private, they're gonna go on the inside. Um, so that way they can't be accessed or seen from outside. You can only access and see the things that are public or on the outside. If it's private, it goes on the inside. So I have um, int sides, private boolean is filled. So those are there for my um, instance variables that represent my state. Then I see I have a constructor and I know I see that it's public. So since it's public and since it's a constructor and I want other classes to be able to access and use it to create my object, um, I'm gonna write that on the outside and I see I have state, a state section. On the other side, I have behavior for methods. Um, and I'm gonna write this constructor here, shape and new sides, boolean new filled. And according to this, we set our sides variable equal to whatever new sides is. And our is filled to oops, um, whatever new filled is, our parameters. So now I have my blueprint so I can create my object using my blueprint. So now and uh, I see in my console, my main method, I'm creating a new shape called tr uh, triangle um, that's going to pass the values three and false to that constructor. So first I need to create that variable, shape triangle. And since it's an object, I need to use a reference variable um, and declare the type just like I did with the double and ends. So this is gonna be a type shape and it's gonna be a, the variable name is gonna be triangle. All right, so now I have to create the shape. This is, I'm calling new shape with three false. So this larger shape, um, blank shape at that, is going to represent objects. So I can decide what kind of um, data is gonna get stored in here. So in this case, it's gonna be a shape object. And every object that we create gets its own uh, copy of the instance variables. So I need to use my blueprint so I know how I'm supposed to create this object. So I see that the three corresponds with the first uh, parameter, new sides. So sides is going to equal three. So that is an int. So I'm gonna get an int variable. Got my int here. And it's going to get the value three. So I'm putting three inside of an int. And this is supposed to be for my sides. Now that I have that, I'm gonna set this off to the side for just a second. And then the false corresponds with the second value that I have, or the second per, uh, parameter that I have, new filled, which is used to set my is filled instance variable. And according to that, uh, according to my code segment, it's gonna get set to false. So I have this little true false thing right here. I'm gonna fold it in half. And just to make sure we don't get confused, I'm gonna fold this side over just to make sure that I can't see the other side. So I have false 
And this is going to get set for um, our new is filled instance variable. It is filled. And both of those will go inside my shape because those are the instance variables that a shape object gets. And every time I create a shape object, it gets its own copy of these instance variables. So I've created my shape object, but now my shape variable triangle needs to point to that shape object. So that equal sign part, um, I'm just going to use some tape and I have a rubber band here that's cut in half. You could also use a piece of yarn and tape one end to the shape object and the other end to my reference variable that is storing or is pointing to my shape object. Um, so that is how we could demonstrate how objects are stored and worked with, with, with um, in Java and also could be used to kind of talk about like, well, now that we have these instance variables inside of the shape object, how do I get to those values? So it brings up the conversation about access or mutator methods later on, um, as well as even um, different ways like we can create different objects that can point to, or different reference variables that can point to new objects or even the same objects that have already been created.